Okay, so today we're going to take a look at what's going to happen if the entire continent of Asia disappears in the modern day. Now, this event is very unlikely to happen. And if you ask me, this doesn't make any sense. But just for the sake of this video, we're going to assume that the entire continent of Asia just disappears. And before we start the video, I want to talk about the Discord server. You guys can join via the link in the description. It's just a way to interact with me more. Also, guys, I won't be able to animate this one. I'm a bit busy today. But yeah, enough yapping. Let's get right into the video. Now because of this very fake event, the world economy is going to suffer quite a lot because without Asia and without the labor force that Asia offers, the western countries won't be able to assemble all of their products in China and India, mainly talking about China here. Also Asia has a lot of other things to offer which include oil, other resources and many more things so yeah let's see also the world has lost about 4.7 to 4.8 billion people which is a huge number so what is going to happen now well first of all we can see that all of the eastern european countries now have a coastline which is very good for their economy but at the same time it is not good for their economy because they lost asia so yeah what are the events that are going to happen well for the first 50 years or so the world will be suffering but they do come up with some plans in order to trade with each other and then revive their economies but yes yeah, some events are going to happen and those events are well because belarus lost their major ally i mean they did not lose them russia is still kind of present in kaliningrad but yeah still because belarus lost their major ally we can see that poland and ukraine form a coalition against belarus and the reason is well both these guys want some lands so yeah that's it nothing else we can see that the Polish troops are now pushing into Belarus and at the same time we can see that the Ukrainians are also pushing into Belarus and the main goal of both these countries is to actually get to Minsk. We can see that two armies are now pushing towards Minsk and we can see that the capital city was lost because Belarus is not a strong country and after the fall of their capital city we can see that the Belarusian army is unable to push them back but eventually after all of this chaos we can see that the remaining parts of Belarus just go ahead and surrender and in a peace negotiation we can see that that Belarus got split between Ukraine and Poland and following this we can see that the Polish come up with another idea which is to actually declare war on the remaining parts of Russia which is Kaliningrad and the Polish were easily able to take all of Kaliningrad and later on we can see that Kaliningrad also got completely annexed by the Polish government and now there is no more Russia and the Russian allies are dying right now and there is another Russian ally in the Balkans and can you guess what's gonna happen to Serbia wow this is really not looking good for Serbia. We can see that all of these Balkan countries have declared war on Serbia and now things are not looking good for Serbia. We can see that all of these countries are now pushing in and the Croatians were able to take Belgrade and slowly but surely we can see that all of Serbia is now under the coalition's control. And in a peace negotiation, we can see that Serbia got split between all of these Balkan countries. And now all of the Russian allies cease to exist, which is quite unfortunate for the drowned Russians who are at the bottom of the sea. I mean, just imagine what would happen if they came back. But okay, that's not gonna happen in this video. But oh no, something's gonna happen here too. Now because Cuba is a major Russian ally, Okay, so now because Cuba is a major Russian ally, and since Russian allies are dying right now, the same is gonna happen to Cuba. And this will be done by, of course, the United States of America. And now things are not looking good for Cuba, as they don't have the military capabilities to defeat the United States, also because they have lost their major ally. So yeah, we can see that the US makes a naval landing in Western Cuba, and they push around, and we can see that now all of these regions are under the US control. We can see that they also make another landing in eastern Cuba, pushing around and securing all of these regions. But now the main army is pushing towards the capital city of Havana. And unfortunately the capital city was lost. And the morale amongst the soldiers has also been lost. And now with all of this chaos, we can see that Cuba also finally goes ahead and surrenders. And in a peace negotiation, we can see that all of Cuba got completely vassalized by the United States. The United States is not going to stop their invasions, mainly the invasions of the Russian allies. And there is another Russian ally down to the south which is venezuela and thus we can see that the united states declare war on venezuela we can see that the u.s makes a naval landing in the northern parts of venezuela and because the venezuelans don't have a good military and also because they were unprepared we can see that they lost their capital city of caracas the u.s military still pushes around
ground, securing most of the coastline. But because the Venezuelans have lost literally everything, we can see that they finally go ahead and surrender. And again, we can see that Venezuela got completely vassalized by the United States. Now, these events all happened because Russia just disappeared. But we are going to see more and more events. Also, Oceania is pretty lonely now. That's quite unfortunate. But now, but now some funny things are going to happen to Africa. And um, these are not going to be good. Well, now because Ukraine has a huge coastline and now they are a very powerful nation also having a pretty good navy we can see that they want some colonies because you know they did not exist back in the colonization period so now they want some of their own colonies so yeah let's see who they declare war on we can see that the ukrainians declare war on eritrea as well as Djibouti because both these countries are pretty small they don't have good militaries and they are pretty close to the ukrainians we can see that the ukrainian navy now has arrived on the coast of Djibouti they make a naval landing in the north they make another naval landing in Djibouti taking out all of the country this same army pushes into Eritrea and the capital city of Eritrea falls and with this the remaining parts of Eritrea is a surrender and later on we can see that all of Eritrea as well as Djibouti is now under the Ukrainian control and they are completely annexed seeing the Ukrainian colonization thing we can see that Italy also comes into action as they also want their own colonies for which we can see that they declare war on Tunisia you know just to revive the mediterranean order or the roman empire so yeah anyways we can see that the italians have now made a naval landing and this was a surprise attack due to which the tunisians lost their capital city of tunis we can see that the italians are now pushing down south and all of the coastline is now taken and with this we can see that the remaining parts of tunisia just surrender and now tunisia got completely annexed by the italian government but seeing all of this colonization thingy we are going to see some alliances taking place and these are going to be some military alliances of course in africa so yeah now let's take a look at these alliances okay so if we take a look at this alliance map we can see that all of the muslim countries have made their own alliance these are not necessarily all of the muslim countries but it's still known as the muslim alliance we have this West African Alliance, which includes all of the West African countries. We have the Central African Alliance, the South African Alliance, the East African Alliance. And then we have Ethiopia and Madagascar on the same team, making their own kind of alliance because both these countries are chads and they don't listen to any other countries. And now because there are all of these alliances, now it's going to be hard for the other European countries to actually get into Africa. So yeah. But yeah, if you want to see the part two of this video where there might be a war between the Europeans and the entire African alliances, then go ahead and subscribe. And if this video gets enough support, I'll definitely do a part two on this video. But yeah, this is going to be it for today's video. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to subscribe, leave a comment and tell me what you guys want to see in the future. And thank you for watching. Also, the memberships are now open. You guys can become members and have a lot of perks. The super thanks feature is also now open. You guys can greatly support me. I got to get a new pc guys it's helped me out and yeah goodbye